Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday 24, 2017. So again, stock market is hitting all-time high. All-time high is it is very well bought, but at the same time it is very bullish. Uh, we'll also look in some detail at the 2015-2016 uh, time frame and see if the plunge that happened back then is possible today. Look at junk bonds, that they are confirming the moving stocks, and uh, also, but however, the bonds and the investment grade bonds and the treasuries are surging, and this is affecting various uh, sectors within the stock market, such as utilities and REITs, and um, negatively affecting uh, some of the other ones within the market. Uh, gold and dollar are both moving higher, which is very unusual, and eventually something has to give, and we'll look at gold miners as well. Uh, oil again goes nowhere for 11th straight week in a row and however the energy ETF is showing some divergences and we may see it may indicate that there is more possibility of a downside for oil and finally we'll look at natural gas all right let's start off with our uh, S&P 500 ETF SPY so very just really good looking move you know we had a surge consolidation another surge so this surge is kind of getting to be equal to this surge and i think the just visually we're kind of getting to the point of where we may take a pause uh, of some sort however again this is a all-time highs and uh, these are all-time highs which are confirmed by the breadth. In other words, this advance in the stock market is broad. You can see advanced decline lines, advanced decline volume lines are hitting all-time highs. Now, I keep pointing out this, you know, advanced decline lines and why am I doing this? So, what I'll show is, um, in the next few minutes, I'll show the 2015-2016 uh, picture, 2014-2015 picture, um, and why the breadth is actually very important uh, for trading uh, stocks, especially if you're trading indices, of course. So moving on with S&P 500, um, you know, very bullish picture, of course. We are overbought. You can see here, for example, RSI. Um, overbought does not mean weak. Overbought means that there is a lot of buying pressure. Um, you know, eventually we will stop being overbought and roll over, but we don't know at what point. Um, the important thing here is this two indicators, the percentage of stocks above the 200-day EMA and the bullish percent index, and they are at the highest for the move. You can see we're higher than here, uh, and for this one as well, higher than here. So this is confirming the broad advance in stocks. QQQ similarly at all-time highs. Um, this is powered by Apple. Of course, Apple is 10% of this index, but you know it is a big part of it. So it's a top-heavy index, uh, very overextended, but also extremely strong. You can see the advanced decline lines are at all-time highs as well. So this is a good-looking uh, strong chart. Uh, overbought, uh, but again, that doesn't mean weak, that means there's a lot of strength to push the index so much higher. Here's the percentage of stocks above the 200 day and the bullish percent index, it is also at a high for the move. Uh, you can see there at 86 and 84 percent, respectively. We are getting a little bit of a divergence with um, IWM. The Russell 2000, we can see, is moving higher here, but the breadth is not um, moving higher as as I just showed. For example, here is a percentage of stocks above the 200. You can see it's been steadily dropping as the index moving as was moving higher. Same for the um, there is no bullish percent index for this uh, particular. Um, ETF, uh, but you can see a um, momentum divergions here on the price momentum oscillator and on RSI. Um, so 
Whether or not this is a canary in the coal mine, we'll find out relatively soon. Okay, so here is what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a little bit of a step back and look at some of the historical charts. So here is first of all is the current charge chart for uh, February 24th, 2017, and this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the middle uh, part here. In the upper part here is the GNK, which is uh, in, um, uh, junk bonds, the high yield uh, junk bond ETF. Uh, down below here we have the advanced decline line, advanced decline volume line, and the bullish percent index. Uh, this is at all time highs, and um, bullish percent index um, showing a little bit of a divergence, but not a dramatic one. Uh, just yet. We're at 83, we're at 90 here. So, um, very mild divergence, if anything. Um, but the important thing is, uh, for, of course, I think, is the advanced decline lines and also the junk bonds. Uh, they are uh, so far confirming this bullish posture. So, uh, let's uh, look back and, of course, uh, see if. Um, you know, historically, uh, we are in the same market environment. So this is uh, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average as it was on December 5th, 2014. Uh, we hit fresh all-time highs here uh, and the Dow Jones. Advanced decline line was confirming. It was a fresh all-time highs. And there was a very mild divergence uh, in the Dow Jones in, in the bullish percent index. You can see a very similar picture. However, up here we can see the junk bonds. They are not similar. Um, you can see here we were we are at all time highs. Um, contrary here, the uh, junk bonds picked out here back in September of 2016, and since then have been steadily dropping. So you can see a divergence already forming here. Um, not a major issue, but I would be already probably cautious at this point. So as we advance further, uh, this is as of uh, end of December 2014, you can see a clear divergence here in the junk bonds as we are making fresh all-time highs in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And now we are seeing some divergences in the advanced decline line and the bigger one in the bullish percent index. So you can see already a little bit of a divergence, not a divergence yet in advanced decline line, but you know it's already um, a little bit of more concern. We advance even further, and this is at uh, Dow Jones as of 27th February 2015, and we are making fresh all-time highs in the index. But here now we have clear divergences. We have the advanced decline and the advanced decline volume and the bullish percent index and also the junk bonds. All four of them are diverging from the, the Dow Jones and you can see them clearly with a naked eye. They're not, you know, they're not hiding there. So we advance further and this is now May 2015. Uh, we make yet another fresh all-time high for the Dow Jones. Um, but divergences remain in the advanced decline lines, in the bullish percent index, and the junk bonds there are not able to make fresh all-time highs, so this uh, all-time high still remains here for junk bonds. <clears throat> uh, also, this is just, just a side note, um, even with narrow breadth, in other words, not all stocks participating, uh, the indexes can make, indices can make uh, fresh highs. So. This is called a narrow advance, basically. We continue further. This is June 2015. Um, here we have a divergence in the junk bonds. A little bit of a, you can see a gap there already. So a little bit of an initial support break here in the junk bonds. Um, the important thing is here is the advanced decline line. You can see breadth is breaking below previous lows. And here the advanced decline volume line also breaking below previous lows, you know, right there, while index has not yet broken below. So you can see that there is a divergence. This is a bearish divergence. And, um, you know, this is of major concern at this point. 
We advance even further. This is uh, 29th June 2015. Divergence has remained, but now we have an actual support break on the index itself. You can see we broke below this low here. Um, uh, clearly, there's more divergences and more uh, continuation of the breadth lower. So finally, in uh, August 2015, 25th August, we have finally have this plunge here that uh, materialized, um, you know, uh, after we broke, uh, basically we broke this support from 2015, um, early 2015. And of course, the market breadth continued lower as well. So what does it tell you about uh, the current picture versus the previous picture? And I think the answer is pretty obvious. We are nowhere near anything. We have basically no divergences. We have all-time highs. There's a very mild divergence here in the bullish percent index. There are all-time highs in advanced decline lines, all-time high, obviously, in the index itself, the junk bonds as well. So, so far, I don't see a major issue with the stock market. We are definitely overbought, but that does not mean that we have uh, major issues, like, for example, we had here in 2015, where we had multiple diversions and eventually um, support breaks on the market breadth, and then finally support break on the actual index itself, followed by a major decline. So it took a long time, you can see it took almost a year to uh, to get to this point, and currently we are nowhere near that um, pasture. So this is a perf chart for the major index, uh, major um, sector ETFs, uh, and this is just for five days, for one week uh, of trading. Um, so you can see that, you know, S&P 500 technology are up a little bit here. The important thing is here, you can see that the defensive sector, the consumer staples, the healthcare, and especially the utilities are up uh, significantly more than uh, the other sectors. Um, industrials are flat basically and financial is actually slightly down so uh, this is you know looking like a shift towards more a defensive posture um, th that could be looked at that uh, that way um, alternatively we can think about the consumer staples healthcare and utilities are simply uh, catching up to the rest of the market so Let's look at some of the sectors here, and here is XLV, the healthcare ETF. Um, I pointed out repeatedly that this is advanced decline line, and you can see that this 542 here is already above previous highs, and this was all-time high on the advanced decline line, and uh, actual, the index was not even close to all-time high, it was like back here. Uh, now we are continuing to move higher and we're approaching all-time highs for um, XLV. For XLP we actually did hit all-time highs and I said the same thing. We were uh, right there. This was in mid-January already. We were breaking out in advanced decline lines uh, and advanced decline volume lines so we can see a move higher uh, before the moving index and look at this big move now, all-time highs. So consumer staples is a defensive sector, so possibly we are rotating into more uh, defensive posture, basically. Uh, real estate is lagging slightly, but it has been moving uh, higher, especially now that the bonds are also moving higher. And of course here are the utilities. Um, just a very, look at this move, very sharp move up. Um, I'll, when I get to bonds, I'll show you what I mean, uh, why I think this is happening. Uh, but the same thing, uh, this is actually advanced decline line. You can see this level here of 545 in December. This was all-time highs already. Um, and, of course, the index all-time highs were back here. So this is a bullish divergence, which now seems to be materializing um, 
for XLU. And here's very briefly um, of some of the offensive sector, very powerful move in technology. Here are the financials, uh, also at multi-year highs. Uh, you know, financials will come under pressure if bonds will come under pressure, if bonds will uh, rise. And I think bonds currently want to go higher, so I think financials might be more sensitive than the rest of the market. So we could see... Um, you know, a correction, a general correction in the market. Uh, and the reason for that is by, because I think it's because of the bonds. Um, some, for some reason, the bonds are currently moving higher when we get to them. So financials could uh, come under pressure if bonds move higher. Uh, nevertheless, the, uh, consumer discretionary also hit all-time highs. So, so far, no major issues, and you can see, the, uh, you know, no, no major divergences just yet. Uh, industrials also at all-time highs and uh, all-time highs and advanced decline lines as well. And finally, here are the junk bonds, and as I just showed with uh, Dow Jones Industrial, um, Junk bonds are clearly bullish. These are all-time highs. This is including dividends, by the way, so that's why this uh, level is all-time highs. Um, so this is, um, you know, important uh, to be... Uh, this is important for the stock market, basically. And same goes for um, all-time highs. Uh, this is a weekly chart, and it just shows that we are at all-time highs uh, for the junk bonds. So to summarize, I think the stocks are bullish, uh, and we could see a pullback, uh, but I think it will be a, probably a buying opportunity, basically. All right, and here are the bonds and the source of concern, basically. Um, so here back in November, I was already thinking that we're kind of bottoming out. Uh, we continued lower for a little bit, but then eventually we found support and rallied. And so that was the surge, pullback, another surge, another pullback. Now we have another surge. So this surge is, you know, relatively strong. It looks like we have a gap, a uh, total of, you know, 1.1% in TLT. So maybe we're setting up some sort of a uh, cup and handle here. Um, this minor cup and hand handle, um, I guess we could say that this is the lip, but maybe, I don't know exactly where to draw the line, but let's just say that this is going to be the lip of the uh, hand uh, of the cup. So this is about 3.7%. Uh, can move up maybe yeah so I guess I'm, I'm guessing we're going to be um, filling this gap and this is just like a great great attractor for the uh, security and you know this big unfilled gap and also this 200 day moving average but this also is a support break so um, I wonder you know I, I'm still having trouble with TLT basically because you know back here it was all-time highs, you know, around here I would say, okay, we're a little bit oversold, maybe we're ready to go higher. Then we had this big plunge here, but then eventually we got to 52-week lows. So this is what kind of throwing me off right now is that we are, you know, these are all-time highs, but these are 52-week lows, so it's, for me it's difficult to say where is this going. Um, the picture is a little more clear on the investment grade corporate bonds and in fact we are already filling this gap. This is today's high so we are exactly in the gap area and we are already filling this gap. So um, looks like we are breaking out. Maybe this was a, like a cup and handle as well. You can see there's a cup and now we have a breakout out of this cup. So this is about 1.47 percent so we could expect to move maybe to here another uh, one and a half percent or so for L you know um, 
So it looks like we are going to fill this gap and most likely TLT will follow. Uh, this one I have a uh, more easier time with than the TLT. This is a weekly chart of LQD and this is pretty clear. We had a breakout here, right there, um, in April of last year, above previous highs, continuation to uh, all-time highs, pullback, and we get basically pulled back to the um, broken resistance. So now we're, you know, bouncing off the resistance, basically. So. Um, LQD, in my opinion, is more bullish than TLT, and or I guess it's a little bit just easier to wrap my head around than um, TLT. So this is kind of showing that we're switching to a little bit more of a defensive posture. So maybe um, the the move higher and bonds, um, stock market overbought move looks like a tilt towards the defensive sectors, you know, such as utilities, REITs, and consumer staples. Um, you know, put it all together, maybe we are um, going to get a uh, correction of some sort in the stock markets uh, sooner rather than later, finally. So, briefly, um, on US dollar index, um, so this is, I think this is a bullish chart, uh, this is a daily chart, and these are multi-year highs. Uh, we pulled back from multi-year highs over the past couple of months, found support around previous levels, 99.25, we penetrated a little bit, but I think um, we found support here, and now we rallied, um, you know, more or less we're kind of holding here in this, uh, in this area. Uh, whether or not we will continue higher, it depends on many things. I guess if they do raise interest rates, then uh, dollar will uh, benefit. Um, so here is the US dollar in the weekly time frame. So this is the third week in a row of uh, gains. Uh, it was a minor gain, you know, 0.14%, but uh, nevertheless, it looks like we are. I think we may see another retest to this 99.19 area uh, and then a continuation higher. If we do pull back, um, gold may take advantage of that and actually move higher. Um, alternatively, we could, uh, you know, it's possible we don't get a pullback and uh, the dollar will actually just continue higher uh, and retest multi year highs again. Uh, generally speaking, I think this is a very bullish chart. This is a long term. You know, uh, surge, big two-year, almost two-year consolidation, maybe like a cup and handle kind of thing, and the depth of this pattern is 9%, so we could expect at least that much uh, move higher. All right, then here's gold. Uh, this is a daily time frame. Um, so it looks like we're moving higher still, and it seems that we are trying to break out above um, this previous, well, broken support, I guess. Uh, the 200 day moving average is just up ahead here. Here's the US dollar in the daily time frame, same thing. Um, you can see pretty clear negative correlation. When the dollar moving lower, the uh, gold was moving higher. Here, dollar was moving higher but gold was also moving higher and actually I put a correlation coefficient here normally it's negative but on occasion it is it does become positive you can see it was in the past here and right now we are uh, in that uh, weird um, positive correlation uh, time time period so as I said you know it's possible for a dollar to um, come back and retest this low here at 99 so which actually could be uh, quite nice for gold and we, maybe we, we continue higher to like 1310 and maybe we'll retest this high here so it's entirely possible um, you know, for that to happen all right and here is gold in the weekly time frame so looks like we may be breaking out above this previous resistance here. I marked it last week uh, on gold itself. So quite a strong move here in gold, uh, almost 
you know, a V-shaped reversal here and a possible breakout. Um, I'm not yet, I mean, it's possible, but I'm not 100% that this is indeed going to hold here or not. Um, on the weekly time frame, uh, the correlation is still, you know, a 20-week correlation. Uh, you can see it's still quite negative. So, in other words, gold and dollar are moving opposite to one another. Uh, occasionally, we get positive correlation, but by and large, it is negative. Uh, here is GDX, uh, gold miners ETF. So... We came up really, really close to this previous high at 25.86, and this is like a perfect target for short sellers. So, you know, you would probably just short above this level here, basically. And maybe we'll already seen that. And I said this is first sell by uh, gold bears here. I tweeted out this chart. Um, now we're a little bit oversold short term, so. Maybe we'll bottom here and attempt another push higher and then eventually we'll take out the stops here and maybe even push higher. Who knows? Um, alternative scenario, of course, is that the shorts come in and um, push the prices lower. Here we have um, market breadth and um, here we are seeing a little bit of a uh, negativity here in advanced decline line. Advanced decline volume actually broke below previous low, uh, which was the low for um, January low. And you can see we actually broke below this low. So uh, maybe we'll correct to like this level and that's possible as well. Um, Maybe this is just the first uh, salvo and we will continue lower from here. Many, you know, many maybes here, basically. Um, for the record, we are, I think we are in a bull market for gold miners, but it's possible that we will roll over. I mean, this is a, one of my uh, gold breadth index, proprietary index, and we have not been able to recapture you know, some of the indicators, um, like for example, this one, this is a percentage of stocks on a buy signal and we, we became bearish back here in um, August of last year. And so far we have not been able to recapture uh, the bullish posture. So even with this big surge really didn't get there. So, um, you know, we'll see where this goes. So this could be like a bear market rally. Um, but then again, if the dollar decides to take a plunge, maybe we'll just uh, skyrocket from here. Uh, and finally, here is the weekly time frame for GDX. So this is the level I was telling you about, 25.86. And maybe we're already rolling over here. That's entirely possible. Okay, let's move on to oil. This is West Texas Intermediate. Uh, light crude oil continuous contract on a daily time frame. 52 week highs here back um, end of 2016. And basically nothing happened here since December. So all of this consolidation is just like a tight trading range between 55 and let's say 4960. Um, it is moving slightly higher uh, overall, but you know it, it, you can also just say that this is a basic, tr basically a trading range. In fact, on the weekly time frame, it's a little bit more obvious. You can see that this trading range is basically like 11 weeks worth of trading here, and here's similar picture in 2015. We had just basically consolidation and finally a plunge. So looks like we are consolidating and we will either break out or break down out of this range. Um, however, here is energy, uh, XLE. This one has a little bit of um, extra data associated with it. This is a uh, market breadth. Uh, it has market breadth associated with it. So. 52-week uh, highs, and now we're pulling back, and a relatively 
strong pullback and looks like we are um, retesting this breakout you know that happened here in November so we had one surge but now we came back and gave it all back so um, this is a little bit concerning basically um, what's more concerning is this uh, market breadth data so first of all these are 52 week highs but these are not 52 week highs for advanced decline line you can see we're moving steadily lower and lower in fact this is now a low for the move to 74 uh, even below this levels here so this is very concerning to me additionally you can see the advanced decline volume for XLE actually had a support break if you can call it that um, so now I wonder if we are going to move lower for XLE um, and by extension if oil will decide to follow XLE lower um, yeah so once again like I, I showed with Dow Jones Industrial Average you know we see quite a bit of evidence pointing to the possible downside for XLE actually finally here is a natural gas uh, daily time frame um, as I keep pointing out and this is just a warning to beginner traders and even some intermediate traders um, this thing is crazy volatile uh, gaps consistently and very just wild kind of security so we had a big drop here big red candle here on really high volume and now it looks like we're bottoming out possibly bottoming out but I think natural gas kind of wanna I think it wants to retest this lows here and this breakout level at two dollars 52 cents 54 cents basically so we may see uh, more retesting in this area here here's a weekly time frame I extended this um, a breakout level you know we had a resistance breakout continuation higher than 52 week highs and now looks like we are pulling all the way back to the breakout level and um, yeah so <laughs> very very wild security basically uh, all right um, that's it for this week's recap uh, please do like the video if you have any comments uh, do comment and of course please do share this video and this post uh, if you feel that uh, this post was valuable to you so you can uh, share it with your friends and um, acquaintances all right uh, thanks for watching and have another great trading week and please stay tuned on how to find us on the internet bye bye so I wanted to show you how to find us on the internet. Please go to masterchesstrading.com. We do have a trade alert services which are live right now. Uh, so please consider signing up for um, the service. It's only $24.95 per month. Also, if you sign up for our mailing list, you get a discounted uh, membership. Um, you get to see uh, what I'm buying and selling and which funds I am looking at uh, potential uh, buy sells etc there's quite a bit of uh, members only content once you log in there is um, uh, a lot of information about risk control which is actually extremely important uh, for traders because the preservation of capital is really uh, one of the paramount um, to the uh, success as trading in trading there's quite a bit of psychology of videos uh, psychology of trading videos in the members only section as well um, also i'm uh, going to be starting a dividend aristocrats um, service uh, for now it's free for the members that are logged in uh, that are already paying members so uh, that's another benefit to signing up soon uh, the blog section shows uh, the previous uh, posts and market videos of course um, also I added a new section here which is FAQs and I do get quite a bit of questions about various um, you know ideas uh, and questions about the market so if you do have a question please don't hesitate to send it in um, you know send it uh, here and uh, I'll be uh, able hopefully I'll be able to answer it for you all right um, Thanks for watching and please consider signing up for the trailer services. Bye-bye.